Hi guys, welcome back to Mulberry Branch Farm. Now a couple videos ago, I gave you guys an update on the goats, specifically the most adorable goat in the world called Rosie, um, our chicken brooder, the, how the chicks were doing. We cracked into our beehives down there. So if you didn't get to catch out that video, there's gonna be a card up top if you wanna catch up. But at the end of those videos, I told you I would give you an update on the garden. And lo and behold, we are at the garden. So first off, first thing new, not really a gate. I'd like to put some hinges on it, but having some trouble with my doggos, my woman's best friend over there, who is taking a drink from a drain. She has fresh water out every day, by the way. So we're just gonna come in here and do a quick update because we've got some things we need to do. It's a little cooler today, so I decided, <laughs> hi Mark. You guys see him back there? Yeah, he's working on something else we're gonna do a video on. So I decided I was gonna come down here because I have a lot to go over with you guys. There's been a lot of growth, a lot of things are healthy. We've got some experiments going on. So you guys hang tight, let's get to it. I have to say that I'm particularly proud of my garden this year. I really put a lot of heart and planning and time. It was the first year I actually started my season site and like dedicated myself to um, healthy germination, keeping them from being too leggy, learning on the fly, really putting Google to work, really doing my searches on homesteading the best um, soils to use, the best lights to use, how long they should have the light on. And I know I have some wonderful YouTubers out there that I learned a lot from you. I commented on your videos. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. So I'm just going to share with you all the fruits of my labor. And I was a little different this year too. I've got some decorations in my garden. I usually don't ever have time for that, like at all. I don't have time for frivolous things because usually I'm working. This year, I'm working remotely. So that means my whole hour of lunch can be spent in the garden. My whole hour of lunch was spent hardening off seedlings. My whole hour of lunch has been used to take care of goats and chickens and everything else that keeps me so busy here. And this really has been my oasis in a way. It's been my paradise, my labor of love because in those moments during this quarantine where I just, I felt really pent up and really isolated and alone, even though I'm in a house with two other people who I love more than anything in the entire world. This was a place where I can just kind of walk away from my computer walk away from being inside and while I'm feeling the isolation I could just come out here and breathe in the life that's out here and know that I helped it and that it's flourishing because I took the extra time I took the extra lunches to come out here and do what I needed to do and till and amend soils and push compost and turn compost and it is just really been something different for me this year and I don't know I, I would like punning on words here I've grown with my garden this year and I hope a lot of you out there that have endeavored this wonderful path of self-sufficiency and wanting to grow your own food and learning what that means and feeling the victories and sometimes the failures that aren't really the end result, they're a tool for the next experience. So I hope you guys are feeling it like I am. And if you haven't, if you're, you've are you been on that fence, and I said it in my um, chicken video for people that maybe were on the fence about buying chickens and having their own food sources. If you're on the fence about gardening, if you think, well, I'll kill everything and nothing will grow and you know, I'll just, all that time for nothing. It's not for nothing, like it's so much for, your soul and your heart and your mind and just being out here and I know I'm waning poetic but I just I'm really feeling it today like deep in my heart like I'm just feeling it and I just hope you guys feel it if you are on that that fence I'm going to just I'm not going to lovingly nudge you I'm going to just like flip you over because <laughs> it is just you can't be afraid to fail with plants. They're so forgiving. Even if you get them too leggy, even if you overwater them once or twice, 
they can be really forgiving. And if you don't give up on a plant, it doesn't give up on itself either. Odds are you can probably get it back to a healthy, productive plant. So now that I've been poetic and giving you my heart song for the garden today, let's update you on what's going on out here. So I'm really proud of my lettuce this year. They're so beautiful. Like look at the pop, look at the pop of green. Like, and then there's a turd, there's a, bur a bird turd. There's a bird turd on my lettuce. bird turd on my lettuce. It's all right. That's why you soak and wash everything that comes out of your garden. While I know what goes into to my garden, what it's being fed with, I have pests. They like to hide in things. Things fly over. They like to sit and have a glorious day on some of my decorations and I love that because I enjoy seeing them out here. But sometimes they poop on it. So, Isn't that like life though? Sometimes we have things that we work on and we really try to cultivate and grow and then someone or something just comes along and just poops on it and that's okay it's fertilizer poop is fertilizer Woo! the barn swallows are out today guys i don't know if you can see them behind me but here he comes again oh my gosh <laughs> wonder if he'll come at me again so our barn swallows here can be real characters They've actually been one of my favorite birds to watch while I've been home. We have Orioles this year. I've seen a Scarlet Tanger. Um, I've seen Eastern Bluebirds, Purple-Headed Finch, Golden Finch, Hummingbirds, um, Red-Winged Blackbirds, Grackles. I've seen all kinds of birds this year, but the Barn Swallow that's been here every year has been what's really been fascinating me. They're building nests like everywhere, which is totally fine. They, they take care of pest control but they are like fearless. They are so fearless that that one that I just freaked out like twice came in right almost past the camera. I hope I caught some of it on film, but odds are I didn't. So, but they were in our yard the other day and they would take a feather and one would fly up into the air and drop the feather and one would come in underneath of it and grab the feather. I don't know if they were playing or if it was some type of courtship, but <sighs> birds and flowers, guys. Birds and flowers. Flora and fauna just I'm feeling grounded today. Can you tell? Like I can just feel. And I'm just. I'm gonna take off my shoes because I just feel so at one with nature. There we go. See, guys. We're at one with nature. That's how you really get with one with nature. Just take off your shoes and just walk. So now that we're, I'm gonna really try not to wane poetic on you guys too many times today because it does get a little old. But it's just I feel it in my soul today. So we've got our tomatoes that while they came in real healthy I'm not really happy with the growth on them so I think I'm going to do some compost tea I might do like an aerated form and one where we don't aerate it where it's just kind of like an extract so we've got that going on that I will make a video of if I tend to do it but we're just gonna see if we can really get these guys to pump up and, and grow a little bit more for us Everything's been kind of stunted this year because we've gotten an enormous amount of rain. It gets really, really wet and it gets really hot. And then it rains some more and then it gets really, really hot. So um, I think some of the problems with my tomatoes and my cucumbers makes me really glad that I've got them in a raised bed because I honestly feel like they're stunted a little bit because of that influx in water where we do tend to have wet springs here, but like just the last week has been like, been real wet guys so you can see we've got strawberries going here going strong in both of these and look my daughter and my husband are going to be in hog heaven in about a week or two you guys see that that's a baby strawberry and they're all through here you can see there's a whole bunch over here starting they've all lost their blooms and they'll start to bell down some in there the only thing we'll have to watch is with so many birds that I've noticed, I'll probably have to compete with them to get my strawberries this year. And if I don't get strawberries, I might have a revolt in my house because Mark and Joe love strawberries. And while I'm not that big on eating strawberries, fresh strawberries, like fresh strawberries from your garden, nothing beats it. Nothing beats it in the whole world. It's like the best snack to come down here and get. And we will soon have a snack to come down here to get 
not too long because we've got our Alaska piece. You guys, the last time that I showed you this where we had actually moved the rope up, it was like after I moved the rope up, these guys just, just went crazy. Like it's been two weeks and this is two weeks of growth. I mean like all this through here, two weeks of growth. It is just been so great. So I'm hoping that you guys, we're gonna have some peas not too long. I'm just hoping we'll beat the heat. I got in on the late side of the party for peas because I don't usually tend to plant peas or cold hardy because I've never had time on my hands like I have this year to actually go and do that and be productive and for it to be just so healthy because I had time to give to it. So this year I wanted to go for it and of course I kind of, I worried too much and I almost missed out. So I'm really hoping the heat will hold off because I'm pretty sure that these will all turn yellow once we get a really big heat snap. My broccoli, I'm actually really proud of my broccoli. If you guys have listened to anything or watched any of my prior um, seed starting videos or where I'm just correcting these broccoli seeds being really leggy or losing some to frost, I'm actually super proud of everything here except I've got this one plant over here I'm really kind of worried about him, her, it, and uh, I'm just trying to keep some pests off because I'm starting to see holes and I don't like to use the seven. I really want to use something natural. I've read a lot about neem oil and the reason I'm not just going to use diatomaceous earth like I usually would or any type of like seven dust powder, I don't want to hurt my bees. I actually want my bees over here to pollinate what's out here. So I'm straddling that line of the good bugs that I want in my garden and the bad bugs that I want to get rid of, which I guess good and bad is in the eye of the beholder. I'm sure they all do their own part for my garden, but I'd rather my bees do more than the other bugs that I think are bad. Can I see them in there hiding? Some lettuce from last year. Look how pretty. And then I've noticed on some of my cauliflower on the bottom leaves, they're yellowing. So I've just been plucking those as I find them. But I'll have to do some reading. I'm not sure if that's showing that my soil is deficient or if it's starting to get too hot on them or what. And again, that's because like broccoli that I love to eat and I love fresh. Cauliflower, I love to eat, I love fresh. But it's one of those gosh darn vegetables I never have really good luck with. Except for this year, they look super healthy because I started them ahead of time. So I'm guessing that my results this year are proving that I will start seeds again next year. So I've, I'm going to try to store everything that I'm learning deep down in my brain in the file that says, Ashley, don't forget this and don't push it out of your mind for song lyrics for your favorite song of the day. Ashley, remember this. This is your past self talking to you. Don't forget it. You'll thank me. And then here's my corn that I'm babying. Guys, I've got glass gem, a purple hybrid, and then this measly row right through here. That's actually my red corn. I was really excited to see like that bright red burgundy corn, but it just, I don't, it seems like it's just a late bloomer. I keep trying to tell myself, give it time, Ashley, be patient. Everything grows in its own season. And just because the seed next to it germinated and sprouted now, doesn't mean in two or three days that it won't sprout and germinate as well. So I'm hoping that it's not just that the seed is bad and that it's just that they're like late bloomers because I've got the same thing going on over here, guys. You'll see that here in a minute. Gosh darn it. And for me, I like uniformity. I like symmetry for the most part. And it's, it's an OCD person's nightmare over there. Just going to tell you now. OCD person's nightmare. And we got our jalapenos. Some of mine came in here for my starts and they just kind of putzed. They shocked when I transplanted them and nothing I could do would bring them back. Some of them are still in there because like I said at the beginning, if you keep trying on the plant, it'll keep trying for itself too. But one of the really good things here in this bed specifically, all of those little sprouts are jalapenos from last year. I actually didn't get to harvest everything and there were, there was eggplant here. So the year before that I had put jalapeno plants. Then I planted eggplant in here, and at the end of the season, I had jalapenos coming up through the eggplant that had already 
died and gone because it was out of season. And lo and behold, any of those peppers that I didn't harvest, especially down here in this corner, those are all jalapeno plants that are volunteering. So I'm hoping that the, volu the jalapeno plants I started earlier will fruit out and give me those lovely peppers that I love to put in everything and that my volunteers will give me a second harvest. So I'm just hoping to do some succession harvesting because they wanted to volunteer. And everything actually in that walkway right through there, those are all jalapeno volunteers too. I'm going to try to wait to let them kind of grow and get bigger because then I'll transplant it in here or I'll gift them out to my friends that would like to have jalapenos that maybe because every place around here is out of garden supplies and starts because pandemic. Elmo! Elmo! Come here, get my carrots! Got my carrots! Got my carrots, mama! Give me my carrots! Let's see here. And I'll give you guys an update on my potatoes. Y'all, they're killing it. They're killing it even after the frost. They look great. They look great. We're going to actually have to cover them up and roll the sides of our bags up. So for right now, I'm just going to call that a win. Pure and simple. I'm calling that a win. That was a successful experiment. So this year I actually designed my garden and I will already point out some flaws. This pumpkin break in the middle, while I thought it was going to help me seeding, I wouldn't have to break down and move the wheel of my cedar which if you guys didn't get to see that I'll have a picture of it over here if you're interested in getting the cedar there'll be a link for it down on Amazon in the bottom so even though that worked for me for seeding when it comes to tilling and weed control not so much this girl kind of I'm still working on my thought of projection into the future I'm a little bit sporadic sometimes if you guys haven't haven't figured it out so I've got a lot of this weeds coming up which these sunflowers are coming in really good they're gonna be so beautiful but I need some way to control the weeds out here so you guys can already see behind me I've got some straw I'm gonna use straw back for my um, for my corn and then I'm actually going to use actual mulch up here between my rows of sunflowers and that's going to be our new experiment so our experiment with the potato bags worked great if you guys didn't get to see that video on how to grow potatoes anywhere there's gonna be a card up here and you guys can see successful might as well do it and grow potatoes anywhere guys you don't have to have land so bringing us back to the point I'm actually going to do mulch up here and we're going to see we're gonna have a little competition between straw and mulch both can be retilled back into my soil at the end of the season and give back in some way and break down and biodegrade to be food and helpful in my growing seasons to come. I want to see which one blocks weeds better or which one has to have more applications. So I'm really going to try to keep myself honest in this endeavor. So there's that. That is one of the things that we're going to be doing today. I've got the straw, I've got the mulch, I'm running out of daylight, but I'm going to try to get it done today before I go to bed. So if I get a pop-up storm later on in the week, it's not going to be a big deal. Okay guys, here's the OCD's heart attack getting ready to happen. Give it in 3, 2, 1. Look, there is no, there is no corn on these three rows. There's corn over there, the ambrosia likes it, the glass gem and the purple hybrid like it, but the red no like it. And I don't know if it's because you got Oh guys, look, fertilizer. He's gonna puke. He's gonna puke, no. Don't puke, no. Oh, oh great, All right, good thing I didn't step on that thing. I guess I know it was getting my watermelon. I don't know if you can tell, like in the background over here, there's a fence post, another little, all these little fence posts, and I've just got some garden netting around 
my garden because I noticed things were eating my watermelon. So I actually put this up to help keep out the rabbits, but for something like this guy, he's probably just going to climb right up or slide right underneath and get right through. So yeah, at least I know it was getting it now, but you guys can see I've got that fence up and one of the reasons for my fence is bounding towards us as we speak. You see June right there? They love to come in here when it's wet and just race up and down my rows. So you guys see all these like dog prints around in here? Those are from them. And at this point in the game with the soil being so moist, if a dog steps anywhere near one of these plants, it's like completely uprooting it, killing it. And I just couldn't stand for it guys. I've worked too hard. So I put up a net. It's probably not going to be the net. I'm hoping maybe to get into some Premier One fencing. I don't know if it would have kept this guy out, but we'll see. I feel bad for the little guy, but he can't eat my watermelon. I'm going to reseed where the red corn was supposed to be with ambrosia corn. I still have a lot of that left. I'll just do... I won't go down it with the cedar. I'll just do the, the poke a hole in the, the soil, drop it, and close it. I'm wondering that with the abundance of water and then the abundance of heat, if you guys can see that my soil is baked. So it was moist, and then it get really hot, and the sun basically bakes the crust. And I'm worried that because they're slow to germinate and, and pop up in my raised garden, which has been tilled, is a lot better, healthier dirt than what's out here, even though I amended it with compost and um, organic wood ash and things like that, I'm worried that if it's slower, it's probably baked underneath and it's either all going to pop up in a week and I'll feel stupid for re-sowing because I don't have to weed everything out and thin, or I'm going to wait too long and I'm going to miss that window where I can actually plant the corn and get a harvest from it. So as much as I'd like to say we have a longer harvest period here in Indiana, it is bipolar here. But you guys can see I've got some work to do. I've got some more straw. I need to get my mulch down and everything up in here. And then you guys can see these right there. Those are loofahs. My loofah gourds are coming up. And I know I started late on my loofah gourds, but you know guys, better late than never, so. We'll see how that goes. I just would love to see them go up into my cattle panel trellis, which that's the first year I've done that too, because remember, I have a vision this year. We'll just have to wait and see how it goes. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bring over the truck, get some straw down, get some mulch out, hopefully finish up by night and have this all finished. <laughs> guys we're done with that and I'm a little smushes that's okay you didn't do any real work if you didn't get dirty so you can see we've got our mulch down we're spreading that that mark spreading that for me because he's awesome and we've got all our straw back there now I still have enough of those rows out there to show me where that red corn was at so that I can go back tomorrow and plant it I also have some sparse mammoth seeds up here and I don't know if it's because the wheel that I used kind of bunched them or didn't let go of them as much as I would like. So <sighs> I'm out of breath, guys. So I'm going to, I did buy some more packets of seeds for sunflowers. So hopefully I'll be able to even up my rows so that when these guys come up, it'll be beautiful. And hopefully it'll also give me like a succession bloom where I'll have my first round of blooms that come in. And then two to three weeks later, I'll have another um, round of blooms that come in and hopefully that'll just make it a little bit more beautiful here for longer so we're gonna see how this weed cover does we didn't do anything back here because those are our pumpkins and i have all kinds of zinnies um direct sown right there and i might later on once they get a little bit bigger i might mulch around them just for right now i can't really tell what's what they're still at that like i kind of look like a weed stage but i might be a flower so i'm just gonna take care of that we didn't have too many casualties with our sunflowers spreading and dumping and walking backwards. So I think we're going to be good and hopefully 
we'll be able to tell which weed barrier is going to do better. I have a hunch it's going to be the straw, just because the straw looks like it has better coverage. So, with that being said, guys, there's your garden update. We're two weeks past almost three because it's Monday. So, this Wednesday will be three weeks into um, the growing of our direct sown garden plot. I'm going to go ahead and put the fence back up, go inside, get in the air conditioning, take a shower, and relax because, as always, tomorrow brings another project, another adventure, and Lord knows we're already tired and sweaty enough. So, with that guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, let me know, drop me a like, leave me a comment. Let me know what weed berries you use. I'd love to know different weed berries. I know that there's the cloth and there's like a plastic that kind of acts as a weed barrier. That looks, that seems like it would probably be the most efficient, but let me know what you think about it. What are the cons and the pros with that? Because I might want to do something next year if I get some really good suggestions on here. All right, guys, if you feel the need to subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to smash that notification bell just so you don't miss out on anything that's going on here. If you want real-time updates, because sadly, there is going to be a little bit of a delay from when you're seeing this to when I actually filmed it. But if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram, which I'll have those links down in the description below, you'll get real-time updates for me, my little farm, and my little family. So until next time, guys, thanks for being here with us. Bye. Mm -hmm.